we all have our own path to walk. It may be obstructed, it may be winding, and no doubt it will have peaks and valleys, but it is ours alone. Like onlookers at a marathon, friends and family can offer encouragement along the way, but ultimately we decide the trajectory that we take. In this series, Juliet Doris Williams offers a clear view from her path that may inform your decisions as you move toward finding your faith. One part spirituality, one part real world practicality, and a serious splash of fun. Here's Juliet. Hi, I'm Juliet, and welcome to Finding Faith. Among other things, I'm the author of Leaving Church, Finding Faith, and I am here in this space chatting with you about the book and other things that may bubble up when we are talking about matters of faith and life and how those two things intersect. Because if you are at all like me, they always intersect. So welcome back, friends. So while it's a little early to be reflecting on the past year being late November 2020, we generally reserve that retrospective look back of the past year for that quiet, reflective time just after the traditional hustle and bustle of Christmas shopping, gatherings, and celebrating with friends and family. So I'm thinking that particular tradition is not happening this year. And Christmas, much like Thanksgiving, will be a little different, a little quieter. Fewer people gathered, that is, if we are being mindful and responsible about the times we are in. I've heard more and more people express hopes that this year will soon be over. But it's not the year that they want to be over. It's, it's the suffering. It's the anxiousness. It's the insecurity, the instability that this year has represented. Our traditions have been battered this year. It is those traditions that help us mark time, except not this year. I mean, think about it. 2020 has represented an existential crisis for many of us, particularly those of us in the U.S. This year forced many of us to reckon with the role of government, the inequities in our systems. It's forced many of us to grapple with who we are as human beings, who we are as a nation. Some of us, people of faith, inside or outside of the walls of the church, have wondered where God is in all of this. For me, this year, unlike past years, has moved at such a slow Pace. I mean, it's a bit of a shock for me to realize that it was just February of this year when things felt relatively normal. In my company, we were finally just settling down from end of fiscal year activities, gearing up for activating our plan for the rest of the year, which includes annual activities and events. Then March came. And March came in like a slow breeze that kept getting stronger, stronger, and stronger until it was too strong to ignore and it was finally time to batten down the hatches. We had to secure our homes if we had them, secure our workplaces if we had them, prepare, monitor, gear up, stock up, stay up on the news of the day. Schools were canceled, normal, usual social activities canceled. In some areas of the country, we are still experiencing some level of lockdown and life as we knew it has not returned. Businesses are struggling. Some businesses did not survive. People are out of work. Some visiting food pantries for the very first time and a new virus swept our land and killed some of our most vulnerable. At least at first, it did. I've talked about the great social unrest that has marked this year. This year, these challenges have laid bare history that we barely talk about. 
that has led us to this moment in time where we can no longer ignore each other. We've been forced to pay attention. On top of that, we had an election going on. All of that angst and we, the people, needed to decide who was going to be the leader of our country, the one who was going to steer this ship, because we're all on this ship together, no matter our individual circumstances. Who, we asked, was best equipped to steer the ship through these treacherous, treacherous waters and winds of 2020 and beyond? A year like no other in my lifetime, and I'm old. Seriously. But I read something the other day that put things in perspective. You may have read it too. Um, You can Google it. It chronicled the life of a baby born in the year 1900. asks us to imagine that baby born in the year 1900. It's a little bit of a march through the 20th century based on known history. At age 14, that little baby, at age 14, World War I started and lasted for four years. 22 million people died in that war. The same year that the war ended, a Spanish flu pandemic killed 50 million people during the two years it was running its course. By now, at age 29, what we now know of as the Great Depression begins and goes on for about four years. Unemployment rate is around 25% and the world economy nearly collapses. At age 39, World War II starts. And by the time that ends, our baby born in 1900, is 45 years old. 75 million people have died. The Post goes on about the smallpox epidemic that ultimately killed 300 million people worldwide. At age 50, 5 million people die in the Korean War. At age 55, the Vietnam War begins and goes for another 20 years. Four million people die. It's not likely that many people born in 1900 are still alive today in 2020. I do know that there are a small number of centenarians out there, but just imagine the life they lived, the life they survived. Think about that. Think about what it takes to have longevity. One doesn't have to be a student of history to recognize that life is a complex endeavor. Not only do we get to live it, but we get to survive it day by day. Some good days, some awful days. Sometimes those awful days can stretch into months and years. We celebrate. We lose loved ones. We survive. We survive until we die. This year has brought us all to this place of reckoning. Who are we? What do we believe in? What do we value? How will you feel if the year 2021 looks much like the year 2020? Today, I uh, jokingly said that maybe, finally, the century is leaving its teen years behind and will take up the mantle of being a full-fledged grown-up at age 21. I mean, that's supposed to happen, right? Age 21 is supposed to be the magical age when we think we are going to finally have it all together. My daughter, who is a bit past her 20s decade, laughed. We actually, but we both had a good laugh together thinking about our 20s decade when we were far, far from having it all together. All that to say, be easy on your expectations of this century that is turning 21 in a few short weeks. 
It doesn't know what it wants to be yet. And here's the thing. It will be what we make it. If we've learned nothing else this year, we learned that magical thinking is a dead end process. The world insisted we participate this year. Big decisions, hard decisions, sometimes life and death decisions. This was our jumping off the cliff year where we learned that we could fall to the ground, and some of us did, or we could learn that we had wings capable of flight. This was our year of learning something new. This was our year of discovering what we are made of. This was our year of deciding what kind of human we wanted to be. This was our year for small joys and big griefs, lots of deep breathing through big feelings. And some of us, things were hard in the year 2019, and they are harder still in the year 2020. Some of us coped and survived better than others. Some of us did not survive at all. As a person of faith, a person who sees faith as life and life as faith, it was a year of living into that belief system that grounds me. Living into that means that I couldn't tell off that person yelling at me, it means that I had to bite back that snarky comment in response to the unkind and rude statement, it means I had to do the harder thing pray for those who I had no love for, means I had to pull in my focus from those I did not know so that I could better focus on the one standing right in front of me. This was the year that I got to practice what I believe, what I value. The one thing that is always in my devotional prayers, dear God, Help me see with your eyes. Help me hear with your ears. Help me love who you love. Help me do the harder thing. Amen. This was the year for patience. This was the year of not speaking before breathing first. Again, this is the year that we all discover what kind of human we are what kind of human we want to be. As the century is marching into adulthood, it is my hope that you will keep your expectations reasonable, dear listener. The 20s is the decade that will shape what our communities will look like, what they will be like. I think this will be the decade of unprecedented participation. No more spectators. Let's get about building the world we want to see. I'll be there. Hope to see you too. So all that said, this last part is for my friend Jackie, who told me out of the blue the other day that she listens to the podcast. Who knew? She asked me, what if I want to com comment or ask questions about your podcast? So Jackie is my sister friend who can call me anytime she wants. But for the rest of you who might have had that question, there are a few ways you can contact me. You can go to my website, which is Juliet Doris Williams, all one word, dot com, Juliet Doris Williams dot com. There's a contact me form there. If you are a social media butterfly type, you can go to my author page on Facebook where you can make a comment, send me a message ask a question, whatever, look for me there at Juliet D. W. M. S. Juliet D. Wims, author, all one word, Juliet D. W. M. S. author, all one word on Facebook. So that's my public facing page, but also my online living room. So, you know, act accordingly, like you got some home training. Don't be going into my refrigerator unless you ask first. <laughs> That's all for now. Thanks for listening. Love to you all. Until next time, this is Finding Faith.